So I just saw Disney's Luca and it was really good. The story was heartwarming, the characters were relatable, and the music was great. A mix of original music, retro Italian pop songs, and classic Italian opera work together to give the score a real sense of depth and symbolism which really adds to the film. So let's talk about it. Also, before we get into it, I want to preemptively apologize for any mispronunciation of Italian words. I have taken a class on pronouncing Italian, and I tried to do all the research I could, but I'm sure mistakes will be made. <laughs> Dan Romer composed the original soundtrack for the movie, and it sounds incredible. Very open, spacious recordings give a lot to every scene they're in. The first 15 minutes of the movie made me feel like I was in a fish tank with all the characters, because there were just sounds happening everywhere. It reminds me a lot of the Finding Nemo soundtrack, which I absolutely love. But for this video, I want to focus more on the already existing songs that Disney put into the movie. Quick disclaimer, to talk about some of the songs in context, there'll need to be light spoilers, so you've been warned. The film is set in northern Italy during the 1950s and 60s. This is reflected in the score by the inclusion of various pop songs that were written around that time. The film opens with Un bacio a mezzanotte, which translates to A Kiss at Midnight. Mezzanotte per sognare fantastica. This is a fun song that sets the tone for the rest of the movie. The lyrics also focus on the moon and the stars in the sky, which is something that our main character Luca gets very interested in later on in the movie. The next song to play is the aria O Mio Babino Caro from the opera Gianeschiki. Fun fact, I was in a production of this opera in college. The aria is sung by a soprano who's telling her father how much she loves some guy. The song is being played on a record player by two fishermen who are out on the water. They run into a sea monster and the record player is dropped into the ocean and sinks. The lyrics of the aria talk about how this woman would rather drown than not be with her love. So this is very fitting. This one doesn't add a whole lot to the overall plot, but I like it. Next is Il Gatto e la Volpe, which plays over a montage of Luca and Alberto trying to build a Vespa moped and enjoying human stuff. Non vedi che è un vero affare, non perdere l'occasione, se no poi te ne pentirai. The song is about a cat and a fox who are business partners that try to swindle people. These two characters actually originate from the tales of Pinocchio, written in 1833. The song is fun and energized, just like the boy's new friendship. This could also subtly foreshadow Luca and Alberto tricking the people of the town by convincing them that they're regular humans and not sea monsters. The song Andavo a Cento Allora introduces our antagonist of the movie, Ercole Visconti. The song is playing on his radio as he rides into town on his Vespa. Not only does this song get bonus points for being diegetic, which basically means that it's happening in the world of the movie, but the lyrics are talking about going at 100 miles per hour, which fits the character of Ercole as we see him blaze on into town. Shortly after arriving, Ercole starts bullying Luca and Stefano. However, the boys are saved when Giulia Marcovaldo arrives and bikes them away. Very subtly, like super subtly. The song Tinarella di Luna can be heard playing when Giulia enters. <laughs> The title roughly translates to moon tan, and the lyrics talk about a woman who has a moon tan because she stays out all night on the rooftops looking up at the stars. This is very fitting for Julia because, as we find out later, she shares a love of stars and space with Luca. Julia explains to the boys that Ercole, despite being too old to compete, wins the Portoroso Cup every year, an Italian triathlon competition that has a cash prize. After realizing that you can turn cash into things, namely a moped, Luca and Alberto dream about buying their Vespa. This gets Luca and Alberto to join Julia's team and try to win the cup. During the dream sequence, the song Fatti Mandala della Mama a Prendera il Latte is playing. Fatti mandare dalla mama a prendere il latte, devo dirti. 
It's very brief, but the song is about running away with a loved one. Again, this aligns with the plan of Luca and Alberto buying a Vespa and traveling the world together. A little while later, we go to Julia's house and meet her father, Massimo Marcovaldo. We see Massimo making dinner and singing along to Largo al Factotum. That's the Figaro, Figaro, Figaro aria from the opera, The Marriage of Figaro. In the opera, the song is sung by Figaro. And how many times am I gonna say Figaro? Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. Figaro. Figaro is a servant to a count or something. And in this aria, he's singing about how he is the best servant, how he's always ready to do anything and how he's always around and about. This mirrors how Massimo is seen by other members of Porto Rosso. Throughout the movie, we see other townsfolk look to him as a voice of reason and a trusted person in the community. This also continues a musical divide between the generations in the movie. All the younger characters like Julia and even Ercole are introduced with these really hip swinging Italian pop songs, while the older characters are always seen listening to classic opera. This is something that adds a ton to the world of Luca through its music. Different generations have different kinds of music that they like to listen to. The fast, rebellious rock and roll playing on the radio is something that younger people can gather to, but older characters prefer the comfort of classic songs and opera, which is the music that they probably grew up listening to. It's a little detail, but it's really, really effective in making your world seem real, and lived in. Our next song happens during the second montage of the movie where we see Luca, Alberto, and Julia training for the race. The lyrics of Viva la Papa col Pomodoro are about rebelling, which is exactly what our characters are doing. <laughs> going against the grain of parents and other societal norms and trying to win. Luca's parents, who have been looking for him throughout the movie, also have a bit of character growth at the end of this song, where they start to accept that Luca's growing up and making his own choices. A song from the opera The Barber of Seville can be heard in the background of Julia's house right after Alberto has run away. This is another subtle background piece that doesn't really add a whole lot to the overall story, but does enforce the idea that older generations are listening to other music. The song is playing at Julia's house, so we can infer that Massimo put it on. And finally, Città Vuota, or Empty City, plays at the credits after Luca and Alberto say goodbye to each other at the train station. Luca and Julia are riding the train off to Genova to attend school, which ends the film. <laughs> The lyrics talk about missing a loved one in the now empty city, which fits how both characters feel as they say goodbye until next summer. And that's all the non-original songs in Luca. I think the soundtrack is great. It's a real masterclass in putting your audience into the world of your movie through pre-existing songs. There are so many upbeat tunes that add to the energy of every scene that they're in, and the lyrics also enhance the themes within the story. Enrico Casarosa, the director of Luca, was quoted in an article asking about the use of pre-existing songs, saying, In the inception of it, when I imagined the movie early on, I felt like with the genre of movies like Stand By Me or Breaking Away, there's something about summer where you do need the radio on and that these songs become part of the background. I think this concept shines throughout this film and does a great job of introducing new audiences to this beautiful music. I went to college for classical voice, so I was pretty familiar with all the operas, but hearing all these fun Italian pop songs was super exciting and really added to the experience. I've been listening to them nonstop to make this video and they just keep getting better. But what do you think? Did you like the movie? Did the songs add to your experience? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Also, if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to know when my next video comes out. Thanks for watching. Piacere, Girolamo Trombetta.